Hi. A user on the Magix forum wanted to know how to create a moving mask and how to copy and paste effects from an object in one movie to a similar object in a second movie. In part one, I showed one way to do this. In this part two, we'll see multiple movies, duplicating a clip, adding masks to a video that can be used for blurring out faces, applying an effect to a video, size and position, manual tracking using keyframing, copying effects from one object to another, and copying objects with effects from one movie to another. If you haven't watched part one, you may want to do so now, as I won't be repeating everything here. Let's get started. I'm using Magix Video Pro X, but everything that I show also applies to Movie Edit Pro. In part one, we looked at the movie's original with logo and no logo. I'll create two more movies. Movie 3, and I'll rename it. And Movie 4, and I'll rename that. And I'll put the same video clips on each movie and split them at the same location as in the previous tutorial. This time we're going to duplicate what's on track 1 onto track 5 and put masks in between. I'll ungroup the audio in the video using the broken chain link button and delete the audio as I don't need it twice. Now we only see what's on track 5. I'll select the clip on track 1 and solo the track by pressing on S in the track header and then apply the distortion sand effect. Soloing the track shows only that track. Of course, since I already created the effect in this project, I could have copied it from the first movie. I'll remove the solo, and we don't see the sand blur anymore. We only see what's on the higher track number, in this case, track 5. This time, instead of applying the mask to the video, I'll insert a mask from a file directly onto the timeline. In Movie Edit Pro 2020 and VPX 11, Magix added layer masks under templates. This is just a copy of the same masks that we saw in Part 1, but the application is different. You can use your own mask if you want. From the list, I'll select the same mask, Mat 10, insert it onto Track 3 below my video clip, and adjust the length to fit the clip on Track 1. The mask should automatically have the Chroma Key Alpha effect. If not, go to Effects, Chroma Key, and click on Alpha. If the screen has gone blurry except for the mask, it's because the arrow on the mask needs to be pointing up. Note that the mask is black and with a white spot in the middle. Then turn the arrow upwards and just the mask part is blurry. At the same time the mask icon changes to white with a black mask. What's happening is that the white part is protecting the object on the higher number track, track 5, but the black is making a hole so that you see all the way through down onto track 1 the object with a sandy blur effect. The effect works, however we don't have the movement effect for this mask. Since I've already done this in part 1, I'll go back to the first movie, right click on the mask, video effects, copy video effects, and we see the dialog box with the effects. OK, back to the new movie with the logo, movie 3, right click on the mask, and video effects, paste video effects. We have a problem here. We didn't see the alpha effect in the list, and the mask that we copied from was inverted, black with a white mask. I need to invert the arrow by clicking on it. Play it back. This works. Now to get this effect onto the video without the logo, which is in Movie 4. I have to create my duplicate as before onto Track 5. Hold down Control and with the left mouse button, Drag down onto track 5 and release the mouse button. Back to movie 3 and I'll copy the sand effect from the video clip. Then go to movie 4 and paste this onto the video clip on track 1. Back to movie 3 and I'll copy the mask, not the effect. Right click, copy objects. Go to movie 4, position the playback marker at the beginning of the clip and right click Paste Objects to paste the copy of the mask onto track 3. Now I have the mask in movie 4 and it came with the effects. See them in the keyframe area? Play it back to see. 
We have the same thing as we had in the first tutorial, but done differently. Super! Now why did I leave a blank track? Let's add another mask for the second dog. In Movie 3, go to Templates, Layer Masks, and select a different mask, say Mat61. Put this on track 4. Trim or extend it, select it, and give it the chroma key alpha effect if not done by default. However, we need to invert this mask by clicking on the arrow to get it upwards. Now we see a second mask and a blurry area. Go to Size and Position and move the mask over the second dog. I'll make the mask a bit smaller and rotate it a bit. This time, instead of using Attach to Picture Position in the video, or rather image tracking, we'll do the tracking manually using the Size and Position commands and keyframes. I'll do this because there's really no good contrast in the video for the tracking command to properly follow, and also to show you how to do manual tracking. I'll set a keyframe by clicking on the Set Keyframe button. We can see the keyframe on size position in the keyframe area. I'll move the playback marker to the right and move the mask in the preview window to follow the big dog. A keyframe is automatically created at this point. I'll move along the timeline, adjust the zoom, and another keyframe is placed. You may have to scroll back and forth and add intermediate keyframes if the mask doesn't follow the object properly. I'll keep moving and resizing the mask and placing keyframes until I'm done. Let's see the result. Now we have a mask on each dog. To get this onto Movie 4, simply select the mask in Movie 3, copy it as I did before, go to Movie 4, and paste it onto Track 4 at the correct location. No need to copy the effects because they come with a mask. The effects show up in the keyframe area. There you have it. We've seen how to use masks on the timeline, apply a moving blur effect to two objects with two masks by keyframing the movements, and copy the objects, the mask that is, from one movie to another. That's it for now. Till next time, enjoy.